<laughs> well, uh, the Suns TV critic Ali Ross joins us now. I mean, uh, Rod, our mate Rod Little wrote a piece in the Sunday Times yesterday mm -hmm. saying progressives, BBC progressives, killed Question of Sport. They wanted to make it fashionable. They don't like uh, old people and they don't like women who are over the age of 60, so they got rid of the very popular Sue Barker. They got rid of the equally popular team captains, old white blokes, Phil Tufnell and Matt Dawson, replaced them with Paddy McGuinness, who I've got a lot of time for. I think he's a great TV presenter, but he doesn't know much about sport. And pretty soon after Sue left, uh, the audience plummeted from 4 million to 780,000. Absolute disaster. The BBC wokely self-harming mm. again, right? It's textbook stuff. And, and the weird thing is, nothing will happen to that creative director who made all those decisions. Yeah. And they also, but they also won't learn a thing. They'll continue the process with other events. And I'm going to be looking very carefully tomorrow night at uh, Sports Personality of the Year, mm. which just seems... It used to be a behemoth. Like... It's got a new name. Mm. It's called Female Sports Personality of the Year. Well, because there, men never win anymore. There, there ain't no point entering if you're a bloke. If you're a bloke. I, yeah. Josh Kerr, I, one of the few events that had me out of my seat last, uh, in the last year for sport, it's just nowhere. Yeah. I mean, I thought Sue was being very diplomatic in talking about, she well, is, maybe yeah. she didn't, they, the, the old format. Mm. Essentially, I think what she probably wanted to say but didn't was Phil Tufnell and Matt Dawson had built a very loyal audience. They were funny. They had great on-screen chemistry and rapport. When people mm. tuned in, that's what they were tuning in for. They got replaced by Sam Kwok and Ugo, Ugo Monnier. One assumes because it sort of satisfies a BBC drive for diversity. But these aren't big names and, and, and they don't have no. a loyal following. And and frankly speaking, the audience, they're not upset if there's a bit of diversity, but when it's being foisted on a programme and it seems to be top-down activism, that kind of really irritates people when they watch television. Oh, yeah. The, the, the viewers absolutely hated what they did to it because it, it's, it's not just a question of sport, is it? This happens at every BBC programme now. You can't watch the one show without feeling jabbed in the chest. Yeah. Or um, BBC regional news... Across the board, this is what happens. When it happens with a question of sport, which is in the crown jewels of the BBC, you really notice. Yeah. That's the thing. It's just a fun programme. Mm. It, it's a programme that sports fans it's part of a... like to watch. It's gone back for more than 50 years. Remember David Cole yeah, yeah. and all of those guys? It, it's the equivalent of soaring down that tree in Northumbria. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's an act of cultural it's, it's, vandalism. It's, yeah, it's an, and it's... it will have no repercussions at the BBC. Why is the BBC... This is what I think the Director-General should uh, focus on. The BBC seems to have dissolved down to an organisation that we pay for, and in return for our money, uh, it's going to be 173 quid a year fairly soon, mm. they hose us down with their virtue-signalling, woke North London values, and essentially say, uh, you give us the money, but we hate you because you're a bunch of Neanderthals who wanted to leave the EU. How has that happened? Why doesn't Tim Davey do something? about it you know it's ruining the state broadcast well, it, it just needs one or two people to capture every department which is what what's happened you see it as well with football focus it's now the wokest show on television football wokest yeah it's, it's, <laughs> very good it's dying isn't it it's no, dying no mention of the scottish league cup final this weekend between aberdeen and rangers incidentally because it you know much as i love it it doesn't tick any boxes yeah. so you overlook it and you give a whole segment to women's football instead well, and it might make them feel good, but it, it, women's football is the cod liver oil of sport. We're all forced to drink it, but we don't necessarily like it. And then we're not even sure if it's doing us any good either. Well, you know, uh, a lot of uh, football fans don't particularly like female football, women's football. Uh, but according to the BBC, if you say... I'm not that keen on women's football. I mean, I don't mind it, but I'm not that keen football, because be I like the Premier League, which mm. is a higher standard than you get from the women. But if you say that, oh, you sexist, it's well, ridiculous. The, the thing is, encouraging girls to play football is nothing but a good thing. For what, yeah, absolutely. What I, what I object to is when I'm watching a game, and I watched a lot of the Women's World Cup, is I was trying to marry up what was going on on screen with the description I was getting, <laughs> which was this flawless masterpiece that was up there with Holland 1974. Yeah, no one yeah. misplaced a pass. No one hoofed it into Rose Z. No one missed a sitter. They, they have to pretend it is on yeah. 
Mount Olympus of football, this thing. Yeah, and uh, what a shame that the goalkeeper there uh, didn't quite get her hands to that ball that uh, went two feet above her head because she's not very tall. Well, uh, she's going to win it. And the keeper, she, the goal, she, goalkeepers. She are threw terrible. in two against Holland the other yeah. week, which which cost Britain Olympic inclusion because England were no longer going to win that group. And, and, and she's chiefly famous for telling a Spaniard to f off. Yeah, she's going to win as well, isn't Sports she? Personality of the What's year. What's her name? Heaps. Yeah. What's her name? Something like that. Yeah, that yeah. name is something he... This is all is going problem. over my head. I'm like the short goalkeeper in this <laughs> conversation. All the balls No, 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 you're considerably taller than, than most I'm female uh, <laughs> uh, goalkeepers, I'll tell you. <laughs> By the way, I, I'm going to um, uh, Fulham Burnley next week. Let's talk about this. Got another... Uh, and it's going to have... <laughs> oh, it led. Yeah. What chance do you think we've got to get to Burnley? No, no. Uh, it's got a female ref, the very first Premier League I game. I have no problem uh, with that. Yeah, nor do I. Nor no. do I. Uh, that you know, I've and I've, no got, much my I've got no problem with women's football referees. either. It's yeah. just different to men's football, yeah. and not really my cup of tea, to be honest. Yeah, with and you. why pretend? Yeah, it's fooling no one. And they're also saying, uh, oh, I wonder what you thought about this uh, uh, while we're at it, while we're on the B the BBC. Just very quickly, BBC uh, faces a criminal probe for concealing documents and emails linked mm. to the Martin Bashir Princess Di scandal. Executives sending emails, trying to cover it all up, uh, and now they're facing a criminal pro uh, prosecution because they uh, may have broken the Freedom of Information laws. Yeah, they, they strenuously denied this. Um, I should add, but it will be an unlimited fine if they're found guilty of Whoa. this. Well, uh, we'll have to pick that up. Won't we? Our, with the our money again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's another lesson that it's, it's not always the offence which is the, the really bad thing, it's the cover up mm. that follows. Yes, yeah, the Watergate syndrome, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You said that all day, actually. I you know, two just separated I've been at birth, it I tell since you. The day I was born. My cold isn't <laughs> as bad as Kevin's. I'm obviously. stuck in the middle of not, this viral crossfire.